I'm debating if I should do this video or not in like my Spider-Man suit because that was like the main reason people were gonna go see this movie. People wanted to see Tom Holland play a character other than Spider-Man despite the fact that he's been in other movies. This video is going to have spoilers for the devil all the time. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Swell Entertainment and you can absolutely leave your comment down below on whether or not you think that I'm wearing this suit for the sake of commentary or because I really wanted to wear the Spider-Man suit. The Devil All the Time is an adaptation of the book, The Devil All the Time, and was released on Netflix yesterday. I would say most of the hype leading up to this movie was from fans of Tom Holland, Bill Skarsgård, Robert Pattinson, and Sebastian Stan who were all a part of the pretty stacked cast of this movie because this was a very character heavy movie and I don't think it flowed well, but we'll talk. A very basic quick review, the movie's okay. I don't think it's spectacular. I don't think it's horrible, but they made certain choices that I don't think worked well for this type of story. I know everyone's been saying this, but I truly think that this movie would have worked better as a limited series. Maybe the whole first 40 minutes involving uh, Lenora's parents and Arvin's parents would have worked if it had been executed differently I just don't think it ended up working out long term considering so much exposition was still needed to be done throughout the rest of the movie. They also had a narrator the entirety of the movie, which I don't think you need if you do the flashback bits or the bits in the past properly, or you don't need the flashback bits or the bits in the past if you have a proper narration happening. Does that make sense? I did really like when I found out that the narrator was actually the author of The Devil All the Time, like the original author of the book. Some would claim it was just dumb luck while others might swear it was God's intention. But I'd say, with the way things turned out, it was a little bit of both. I would have believed that he was a professional voice actor or something because he did a great job <laughs> telling the story. I do think the narration was done quite well. I just think that it could have been utilized better, especially with the whole elements in the past. I'm gonna run through a bit of the story for you guys. The Swell Spark Notes version is that anything terrible that you think is gonna happen probably is gonna happen. Um, uh, there's like maybe four, five innocent characters in this. Everyone else is pretty much terrible. Um, the innocent characters typically don't live long. They really don't. Um, or they're just sad and we don't see them afterwards. Um, it doesn't go well for anyone, really. Just terrible things after terrible things. Everyone's a bad person. Anyway, but this movie just kind of jumps around from character to character and you're trying to figure how it's all intercepting. Uh, basically, they all end up dying one by one and that's how they all intercept. But there are so many characters in this movie and I remember maybe two names, so I'm gonna go by uh, actor names most of the time. The opening of the movie could definitely have been executed better. I felt like it kind of hopped around a bit, but the main gist is that Bill Skarsgård character has returned from war. He gets married, they have a kid. Boom. There we go. It started. He got into praying for his family and all that. He has a prayer log. They have a uh, cross set up. Bill Skarsgård's wife, Charlotte, that I remember her name because it was cried a lot. They yelled it a lot. She gets cancer. Bill Skarsgård character can't handle that he might lose his wife. He can't handle it. So that he forces his son Arvin to like just basically pray all the time. They're praying constantly trying to save his mother. And Skarsgård's character believes that, you know, sometimes you got to make sacrifices to God to save his wife. So he kills Arvin's dog. A dog dies in this. You see a dead dog carcass. I thought it was ridiculously fake looking. It's two seconds, it's 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 quick. But yeah, they kill the dog. But his wife passes away. And then on the day of his funeral, he goes to go untie his dog from the cross that his father crucified their dog on and um, to give him a proper burial like they gave his mother. And he finds that his father has killed himself. Anyway, we introduce Sebastian Stan's character. Arvin goes and lives with his grandmother. At this time, we also meet Lenora as a kid. We find out in a, a really twisted, unnecessary flashback. I thought this was drawn out as well. Earlier in the movie, we had heard from the narrator that- Seven years later, they found Helen's body buried in the woods. Shit, okay. That's all we needed. I don't think we needed the flashback. I understand we needed it later to introduce the serial killer couple. I feel like the narration at that point was not necessary, especially when we go back on it later, because again, they're flip-flopping the timeline in the front. They go forward and then back. Anyway, husband is a preacher. He goes insane. He thinks that God tells him that he is now has the ability to resurrect people. So he kills his own wife to bring her back. And then he has a moment of clarity, apparently after he's killed her because, oh shit, I can't resurrect people because no shit. Cuts her up and buries her. And 
and then his brother who's like not all there but then is all there I was very confused about the deal with the brother um the brother didn't try to stop him apparently he's just very calm about like because it's crazy what you did you're gonna go to the cops and explain what that you killed your wife because that's what you did creature guy uh leaves his brother who's in a wheelchair and can't get around on his own in the car off the side of the road and hitchhikes and we just never find out what happened to the brother I'm assuming he died because everyone dies in this movie, essentially. Unless I miss something, we never find out what happened to the brother. He's just left on the side of the road and then we go back to the preacher. Preacher is picked up by the serial killer couple and then they kill him. Okay, now we're 45 minutes into the movie. People keep saying that Tom Holland is the main character here. I mean, sure, we maybe see the most of him, but as far as like a full on character, I would say Sebastian Stan gets that treatment more, like we find out more about his character than anyone else, I would say. Um, side note, Sebastian Stan's character of the corrupt sheriff was originally supposed to be played by Chris Evans, but apparently Chris Evans' schedule was overbooked, and so he gave the role to Sebastian Stan, or he recommended Sebastian for the role, which doesn't sound right to me, considering, like, if we're talking about booked and busy, Sebastian Stan does, like, probably too many projects. Like, I'm a little concerned for him. Like, who's your scheduler? Sebastian, do they schedule time for you to sleep? I'm just wondering. I do think Sebastian Stan is a great actor. Not that I think that Chris Evans isn't a great actor, but I can't picture Chris Evans in this role. I really can't. I don't know why. Like, I, I'm sure he would have brought something, but like, I don't know what he would have brought to this role. Unrelated to the movie, I am a fan of Chris Evans. I was also a fan of his camera role. However, I don't believe it's his. I don't, at least that picture. You know which one I'm talking about. I don't believe it's his because let's face it, it doesn't matter how perfect you think your dick is. Nudes are like selfies, you never take just one. However, the black and white Tumblr edit the photo had does in fact add more credibility to it being his photo. It's like maybe he did take a bunch of photos and that was the one he liked the best. Understandable. And then he brought it into Facetune and Visco and just did the black and white edit. So it could in fact be his photo. Yes, I know I'm garbage. And this is what I spend my free time thinking about. The logistics of a leaked dick pic. Back to the video. But Tom Holland is supposed to be our main character. And if you go and search that of all the time, most of the gifts are going to be of Tom Holland. You know what? I got to give his fans credit because they were able to take the bare minimum, truly the bare minimum, and make like full on gift sets of this kid. They're all the same gifts, but like, I'm I'm impressed. It's all of him smoking a cigarette and driving the car and then kind of sort of beating the shit out of other teenagers. It's really it. I'm gonna speed through the rest of the movie fairly quickly. Lenora and Arvin are raised as siblings and are now teenagers. Lenora goes and visits her mother's grave and prays every day. And typically Arvin would go with her every day, but he decided one day to leave her alone so that he could go and kick the shit out of some guys that were bullying her at school a couple of days before. That day is when Robert Pattinson's character, the hypocritical pastor, who I know that Robert Pattinson did a good job in this movie because I wanted to beat the crap out of his character the entire time. The moment he opened his mouth and insulted grandmother's food and like made her feel like shit in front of the whole congregation, I wanted to beat the shit out of him. When he was using religion to prey on young girls, I wanted to beat the shit out of him. Um, just most of the time he opened his mouth, I wanted to beat the shit out of him. But the pastor prays on Lenora, gets her pregnant. She goes to him and tells him, and he just says like, but what we did was in the eyes of the Lord. So we didn't actually have sex. You're thinking you committed a sin, but really, um, if you're pregnant, it's not my baby. I can't be the father of a bastard. Cause again, he's a piece of shit. She accidentally, hangs herself because of what he said and because she thinks that her grandmother will not take care of her and will throw her out and her and her baby won't be okay. She goes to hang herself and then decides based on the narrator that she will be okay. She's a moment of clarity. And when she goes to untie herself, the bucket she's on falls and she dies. There's no easy way to explain this. Oh God, it feels so, there's something really fucked up about me saying this one in the Spider-Man suit. Lenora is one of the few innocent characters in this movie, I would say, that dies who is genuinely innocent. If any of you come into my comment section and say, but she got pregnant, she had sex, or how can you say she was innocent? I will beat the shit out of you. She was preyed upon. Family is devastated. Arvin finds out from a cop that his sister was pregnant. He suspects the preacher because the preacher's a piece of shit, so he follows the preacher around, finds that he was praying on a whole bunch of other girls as well. You got time for a sin? After a drawn out scene that includes Tom Holland awkwardly confessing a forced blowjob with his fictional wife to the preacher, he kills the preacher. Heck, I get so excited, I start forcing it. Arvin decides he wants to visit his childhood home, so he drives, as he's driving his car breaks down, he gets picked up by the serial killer couple. A lot's been happening with the serial killer couple, but 
we're not gonna get into that. Assume, again, everything is terrible. Anyway, they drive him onto a back road so they can do their usual routine. Arvin sees the gun on the guy's belt. As he's going out, he shoots him twice, because again, paranoia, and also they were going to kill him. So it's not really paranoia, I would say. It's more like striking first, but you know, the wife, also has a gun. Because of some shady behavior, the husband was convinced that the wife was going to turn against him because she was still a bad person, but she was probably gonna turn against him. And so he unloaded her gun and filled it with blanks. So when her and Arvin are aiming their guns at each other, he's telling her, put your gun down. She goes, shoot, again, it's loaded with blanks. So Arvin's fine, but he does shoot her, she's dead. Serial killer couple are dead now, okay. Arvin takes off and keeps heading back to his house. Cut to Sebastian Stan's character the serial killer's wife, whose name I forgot, his sister. So he gets called to the scene, sees that she's dead. The sheriff gets a call about the preacher being dead and the suspect, maybe it was the same person who killed my sister. So he goes towards town, figures out the deal, blah, 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 follows him. Arvin's childhood home was burnt down, but that's fine because he wanted to go back to the prayer log and the cross where his dog had been hung up because he wants to give his dog a proper burial. The dog has since decomposed. So he's like gathering the bones to bury him. Sebastian Sands shows up. Arvin Russell, I know you're down there somewhere. There's a drawn out shooting scene. Sebastian Stan is now killed and he just kind of chills there while Sebastian Stan dies, buries his dog and then heads back to the road, hitchhikes a bit, gets picked up. The guy who picks him up, am I crazy? Was that Aaron Taylor Johnson? He's not credited. But like, is that Aaron Taylor Johnson or am I losing my mind? Cause I'm fairly certain that that was Aaron Taylor Johnson. I wasn't expecting him in Tenant. I wasn't expecting him in this, but it's like for like two shots, you see his face. And then I was like confused. Anyway, was that Aaron Taylor Johnson at the end? Let me know. Because of the vibe of the whole movie, like every terrible thing that you think is probably gonna happen, happens. It's like exposition to terrible thing, to exposition to terrible thing, to exposition to terrible thing. That the ending, I was assuming, is it gonna be Arvin falling asleep in this guy's car and then the guy killing him because he wants to rob him. Like that's what I'm assuming is gonna happen. But no, he just like falls asleep and it's fine. End of the movie. The devil all the time is Oscar bait. A lot of movies are. I think it's derivative to say that all movies are Oscar bait because I don't think that's true. But God, there's just not a lot of like depth to this movie. Like it, it, it seems to think it has depth. And I will say this, the movie made me want to read the book. I really do. Partially because of the movie itself, but also partially because of how fans were talking about the book leading up to the movie. Because when people were knowing that like, oh my God, Tom Holland, Sebastian Stan and Robert Pattinson, oh my God, I need to watch this movie. A bunch of people read the book and I saw people being like, it was so dark. I had to like put the book down a couple of times. Like, I didn't think the movie was like horrific at all. Like the things that are horrific, I would say are like horrible, but not horrific as in gruesome. So like, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I'll read the book. Like I'm not expecting it to be like fun and frilly or anything. It's a drama. The movie's a drama. It's a dark movie. It's not meant to be a comedy. I also saw screenshots from a review for the movie on Twitter prior to the movie coming out. And no one that I could see linked the review, but the review was specifically talking about how they felt the movie wasn't funny. And how are you gonna cast someone like Tom Holland and not use him to his full potential and have funny moments in the movie? What? If you know which review I'm talking about, please like DM it to me or something because I, I need to read it in full to figure out exactly what the hell is going on there. Cause wow. I've also seen a lot of people say like, oh my God, Tom Holland is gonna be winning an Oscar for this on a normal year. I would say you're wrong. I would say that Tom Holland would not be nominated for an Oscar for this role. In a Rona year, however, he might be just because the, the, the pickings are slim. And I'm not saying he did bad in this movie at all. I just personally don't think that all it takes for someone to be nominated for an Oscar is to play a role that's against their perceived type. If we're going to compare performances against what we were given, I would say that Robert Pattinson was acting circles around everyone. But again, I mainly just wanted to punch him in the face the whole time. Tom Holland has been acting for a while now, but most of the movies that his fans know him from are the movies from the MCU where he's playing Spider-Man or movies where he's voicing animated or CGI characters. He's been in other movies, Uncharted I believe is 2021, Chaos Walking may never see the 
light of day, but you know, he's in other movies. We just haven't seen them yet. I'm specifically talking about movies he's been in post appearing in the MCU. I know he was in movies prior to being Spider-Man. So yes, for Tom Holland in his current career, this is the darkest role he's played. And again, I don't think he was bad in this movie. I just don't think he was given enough to warrant a best actor nomination. Side note, someone let me know uh, because the only Southern that I am is like, Valley Girl Southern because I'm from Southern California. For some reason, a bunch of you think I'm Canadian. I don't know where that came from. I'm just confused. However, Tom Holland put on this very thick accent in this movie, which like could have just been a stylistic choice. His father, Bill Skarsgård in the movie also had a pretty thick accent. But I mean, considering the accents of everyone else around him, it just seemed incredibly thick. Apparently Tom Holland did in fact work with a dialect coach for his role of Arvin. However, Robert Pattinson apparently outright refused to do so and hid his accent until the first day of filming. And I think you can definitely tell based on some of the lines in this scene alone. Well, that's what I'm here for. That could be a big problem, especially for the young people. Well, when you say anything, what? What do you mean? Well, what's the problem then, son? I want you to know that I, I pray for that girl's soul every night. Overall, I would say the movie is very like bloated with characters, with exposition, with backstory. And it just kind of felt a little all over the place. I felt like it maybe could have been a little smoother. As far as like, the dark bits of it. I wasn't like incensed the entire time. I'm, but I, I mean, I don't know. I like horror movies, so I was like, okay. I don't know if the movie wanted us to root for Arvin. If that was the goal, I don't think they executed that properly. I don't know, the movie's okay. I'm sure like one day down the line, a film teacher is gonna make their class watch it for some reason. I don't think it's gonna win Best Picture. It might be nominated for something. I don't know what, but it might be nominated for something. Has that been off center this whole time? My friend Tyler on Twitter before he'd watched the movie said that the devil all the time didn't seem like a real movie and that instead it seemed like a movie that characters within a movie would be watching. And I totally agree. The lineup of the cast definitely seems like they all took part in a movie and the movie, The Devil All The Time, is just a plot device within the movie. Like all of them are playing Hollywood actors in this movie and they're all seemingly have no connection aside from the fact that they all were a part of this movie that changed their lives. Like someone was murdered on set or there was like a sex blood pack, some type of culty shit happening. And so like the movie itself is taking place and all of the actors are like living their lives but they keep flashing back back to like things that happened on set or within the devil all the time in the movie to like push the plot along. This writes itself, Hollywood, call me. I'm gonna end this here. Um, if you wanna watch the movie, go right ahead. It's not horrible. It's not great. It's not a fun movie. Don't expect it to be. Don't expect it to be a happy movie. Don't expect it to be uplifting. The moral I think is that everyone is terrible um, or everyone is capable of terrible things. Uh, don't let religion be an excuse for horrible behavior. I'm, I'm good with that. If I'm wrong and this movie is nominated for a Best Picture Oscar, I'll wear this suit somewhere. I don't know. Anyone want to invite me to the Oscars? I'll wear this there. I don't give a shit. I'll wear it. But did you watch The Devil All the Time? Did you like The Devil All the Time? Did you read The Devil All the Time? Would you recommend that I read The Devil All the Time? I'm probably gonna read it. But anyway, let me know. Comment down below. But shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Look, there's nothing else to do now. Just release Chaos Walking, release it. I don't care if it's unreleasable. If it's all the more better if it's unreleasable, I wanna watch it. Show me the original unreleasable cut. I wanna see it. Thank you, Alan, Elise, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, David, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Exo, Feckless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lee, Lisa, Manga, Matt, Matthew S, Meme Lord Red, Michael, Michael J, Nathaniel, Pat, Prowlock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wayne, Wendy, William, Zendry.